As we discussed in a lecture on space, art that exists within three-dimensional space, such as drawing, painting, and sculpture, is referred to as the spatial arts. The other classification for artwork is that which moves or changes within time. Time-based work exists within the fourth dimension, and we refer to it as the temporal arts. The most traditional type of temporal arts are those based around performance. The performative arts encompass everything from live music, to theater, to dance. Even though these arts are performed within the space of their particular venue, they are considered temporal because the performance requires actual time to complete. In the still arts of drawing and painting, time and motion can only be implied, as illustrated by the Italian futurist Giacomo Balla in his painting Dynamism of a Dog on a Leash. Here is another example of an implied sense of movement. With this optical illusion, our eyes interpret the coiled forms to be moving, even though this is just a still image. Or is it? Since the 1960s, there has been a lineage in the Western fine arts tradition called performance art. These fine artists stage performances, or happenings, that take influence from theater, dance, and music. The work of this contemporary artist Nick Cave is somewhere in between dance and sculpture. Cave creates these elaborate costumes that he calls his sound suits. He then stages performances that feature dancers in these suits, showcasing the suit's particular range of movement, as well as the unique sounds that these suits produce. When the performance is over, Kay will then show the suits in galleries where they become viewed as static, spatial sculptures. One of the most familiar of the temporal arts is the moving image. In its essence, film and video are nothing more than a series of still images projected in a quick succession. This illusion mimics actual movement so well because it takes the same amount of time to occur. One of the earliest experiments in creating moving images was carried out in the late 19th century by the English photographer Edward Muybridge. Muybridge was interested in capturing the mechanics of movement, which is illustrated in this series of photographs. The basis of this study was that there was a popular debate at the time about whether all four of a horse's hooves left the ground at the same time during a gallop. Moybridge was hired by a wealthy racehorse owner to settle this claim. To do this, he set up 16 cameras with trip wires spaced evenly in front of a continuous wall. As the jockey rode down the expanse, the horse tripped the camera's shutters and proved without a doubt that a horse and gallop does fully leave the ground. Here is an animation of the same images that settled the bet. The Scottish artist Andy Goldsworthy makes a different kind of temporal art. His sculptures, with their natural materials and outdoor-specific installations, are not intended to last forever. Their mere existence is dependent on the severity of their environments. Some of his pieces can only last a matter of hours, or even minutes. The creation and destruction of these pieces is something like a performance, and Goldsworthy's photographs and films serve as the documentation of this act. When a sculptural work has independent moving elements, it is referred to as being kinetic. Like the rest of the temporal arts, kinetic sculpture requires a certain investment of time to perform. Alexander Calder was one of the progenitors of kinetic sculpture in the 1930s. His pieces, called mobiles, resemble the moving toys of the same name found above a baby's crib. These pieces, with their bright colors and bold shapes, range in size from a baby's mobile size to that of a grand chandelier. The wire frames of these pieces have many points of articulation that move in response to the amount of wind present in the space. Because of this changing nature, these pieces are potentially different every time that they're viewed. Today, many artists who explore kinetic sculpture do so through the use of the new media of circuitry and electronics. This piece, entitled Emotor by the American artist Tim Hawkinson, is a large photographic self-portrait. Each feature of the artist's face is printed separately and mounted on independently moving motors. 
These motors are hooked into a computer that randomly generates orientations for the facial features. In this way, he is trying to emulate the appearance of emotions on his robotic likeness.